The Ethereum network has been operating at more than 98% network capacity from at least May of 2020. And we've seen spikes of uh, gas fees because of that. And a number of players have tried to address this issue, what is called as the blockchain dilemma of speed, scalability, security, and cost, and so on. Uh, Near is one such protocol. So in, in today's analysis, we'll, we'll try and look at the, the whole uh, protocol of Near and see what exactly are they up to. Can they be an ex the next Ethereum killer? Uh, what are they doing well? What are they not doing so well? What are the risks? And what, what could you possibly do as of now as an investor? We'll try and look at all that. So what is Near? To begin with, well, Near is a layer one blockchain that is, uh, that is secure, um, that is easy to use and it is scalable, right? That's what they are claiming. What's special about them? Well, a few things, um, starting with the fact that they are carbon neutral. So Near is 100% uh, carbon neutral. They use something called proof of stake and sharding. Those are the two in, uh, technologies that they use. Uh, there is some very interesting uh, information uh, about the finer details of this technology, which uh, you know I'm not going to cover in this video because not really relevant to the uh, purpose of this video. Uh, but do read that up. They are interoperable, right? Now, given that there are so many of these uh, blockchains coming up, interoperability is the next big thing because every blockchain is like an island, right? Imagine you have an Apple phone and you have an Android phone. And, um, you know, they, like, let's say apps need to talk to each other between them, right? It's something like that, right? You have different blockchains, Ethereum, you have like Polygon and, and so on, right? You have so many blockchains and um, today you have a situation where you need them to talk to each other. Uh, maybe you need to have apps that can work on multiple blockchains uh, because you might have users only on Ethereum. You might have some users only on Wax and so on. So interoperability is a very big thing. Now this particular blockchain is interoperable. That means apps built on this can easily move to others uh, or apps built on Ethereum and et cetera can move into this. And uh, for that, right, they have pretty much released something called the Ethereum Rainbow Bridge. They have something with Polkadot and Cosmos as well. So they are trying to uh, you know, ensure that this blockchain is interoperable. That's uh, something very important, Aurora. Um, is a, is uh, a service that they are using. It's an uh, Ethereum virtual machine that is created by the Neo protocol. So what they're essentially doing is that if you are an Ethereum D app, then you can very easily migrate into Neo, and you know this low barrier to entry makes more app developers interested to come on board here. Similarly, they have something um, called Octopus Network. This is for uh, Polkadot. Uh, and the Cosmos Bridge. Now, what else are they up to? Let's look at this. They are founded by a very capable team. So the founders happen to be ex-Google and uh, Microsoft engineers who went on to create the Neo protocol. They have uh, a dream team, a pretty much a dream team uh, with a leading set of investors. Right? That's very important because I keep harping on this fact that investors are something that you need to absolutely look at because if you have great investors you are essentially delegating your task of doing due diligence legal tech um, you know whatever due diligence to these investors with deep pockets right? like a coinbase ventures right or even for instance an a16z right anderson and horowitz these are great investors in fact a16z uh, has i think the highest strike rate of uh, you know web3 investments that they have made which have turned into unicorns or more than a billion dollars in market cap also probably because they invest late stage but still uh, it's it's a great track record to have such investors because they would have done their due diligence and they know that they're not investing in probably something that could be very shady that could be a scam so you are piggybacking off the due diligence that they would have done and for me to have uh, you know, to look at so many such investors here, uh, that is a great, uh, you know, that's a great green flag. So what else? Well, um, some of the good things, right? What's great about them? We'll see what uh, they are getting right. Well, the first one is they are, you know, they have great network stats. So what exactly are the network stats? Let's look at that. Um, they have about 800 nodes online. Uh, if you take even something like a Binance Smart Chain or uh, something like, I, I believe, a Phantom and, and others that I had recently reviewed, they had less than 100 nodes, right? Your Binance had, I think, uh, 26 active or something recently when they were hacked. Uh, so they have, they all have single, uh, double digit nodes and that's a bit of a concern because it's, it leads to some bit of centralization. 
here they have 800 nodes uh, more than 125 currently validating so that's that's something good for me more than 400,000 transactions in the last uh, 24 hours in fact it's almost touching 500,000 uh, a very low gas fee, gas fees so all these things make it very very attractive to build on the neo protocol and you can definitely see the results of that total value locked is more than 300 million right? if you go to uh, you know like for instance a website like footprint uh, analytics you can see that the total tvl here total value uh, locked it has ranged from close to like it has gone like let's say over 500 million and today it's at about 300 million so the variance is not so much in fact it is still holding on to so much of uh, tvl locked and that that's a great thing uh, familiar coding languages are supported right so one thing that i did notice uh, in this whole um, you know what this whole near ecosystem is doing is that they are making it very easy for developers to come and build right whether you are somebody who already has a d app somewhere else on another blockchain or somebody who doesn't have any d app but you want to start on it they want to make it very easy for you to do it and they don't want you to go through a learning curve of learning let's say solidity or, or maybe some other blockchain based coding languages instead they want you to use things that you know something like javascript right and they have a great ecosystem right they have a uh, they have a solid community their projects are being funded um, they have regional hubs they have a tech base right and they have uh, a, you know an internal funding that they have enmarked for their projects i'll talk about that in a minute right uh, coming to the coding languages you can start building with something like javascript or even rust you don't really need, uh, you know, you need to know Solidity or, or uh, Viper or, or any, any such languages. So that's that's something good. This opens up the space for more developers to come in and experiment at least, if not anything. Um, then the next step is that they have a strong venture support. Right? So projects that are building on the Neo protocol are, uh, you know, they have this extremely strong venture support. More than 120 million has been awarded. More than 2,000 pro uh, projects are being funded. Uh, this is great, but this is also a double-edged sword. Right? It means that people will come to and build to get some funding from here, and a lot of them, more than 85, 90% of them, usually go bust. Right? Maybe a small fraction of them survive, but I think this is something that all blockchains, at least layer one blockchains, have to do to create a critical mass of apps so that more users come in, and then the blockchain eventually takes off. So going by that they are definitely on the right path um, the next thing is that this has led to a good ecosystem you can see that there's a growing ecosystem of 885 projects um, let me show that to you so if you go to their ecosystem you'll see on near aurora and octopus uh, they have at least 885 projects building um, all of those are listed here how good are these projects that's something i'll just come to in the very next uh, uh, page so this is, these are the things that they are really getting right, but it's not all hunky-dory, right? There's, there's got to be something going wrong. Well, we'll see what's going wrong. Um, the first one is though, they have a lot of active usage. Uh, they have a lot of uh, uh, apps being built. Active usage is concentrated in a few D apps. If you go to a website like D app radar, for instance, you can see that sweat economy is is one of their highest um, you, you know uh, interacted application uh, with about 34000 or close to 35000 daily uh, users or daily accounts rather daily wallets uh, and after that pretty much everything is in like 1800 and it just dwindles down to 30 20 10 even single digits so very quickly um, i think even if you go beyond the top 5 you wouldn't even have uh, uh, you know more than 100 daily uh, wallets be using it so that is something of a bit of a concern sweat economy is a play to earn sorry it's actually a walk to earn kind of a model where the it's like stefan we had uh, made a video on that earlier you walk and uh, you know they make you do these move uh, they you essentially move to earn and you you earn some tokens because you are walking every day and so on so we uh, will try and do a video on this later on but this is uh, an app that has one of their biggest set of users. Uh, the next thing that is not really going so well for them is the fact that um, they are their tokenomics incorporates an inflationary element to it, right? So the tokens are inflating at the rate of 5%. Of course, there is a certain amount of tokens that are being burnt as well. Um, if you look at this, it says that 
uh, the, the network issues inflation rewards a rate of 5% per year. Of these 90% go to the validators, the remaining 10% go to the, uh, goes to the protocol treasury. Also near burns 70% of transaction fees. So if you look at the net net um, re rewards minus fee burns, it could be less than 5% uh, depending on the network level activity. However, it also means that while it not entirely is at 5%, there is still an inflationary angle to it. That means your money is or your investment into near will continuously degrade by a few percentage every single year, uh, given that the demand remains constant. So that's something that you need to like really keep in mind. Early investors have vesting periods coming to an end. Right? So a lot of early investors have invested in like in 2019 and so on, and they have like 12 months, 24 months, 36 months kind of a vesting period. Uh, and you can see it in this chart where see the series A investors, etc. cetera, uh, how their uh, tokens are coming out into circulation, right? You can see that today we are at, uh, you know, Jan 20, uh, we, are, we are at somewhere around October of uh, 2022. That means more than 850 million uh, tokens in circulation. Uh, and in the next few years, you can see how nicely this curve is increasing. It's going to keep increasing to about 1.4 billion. That means there is going to be at least another 600 million tokens coming into circulation in the next five years. Right? And especially a number of them are coming out, uh, which have already been granted and they are going to be completely vested in the next uh, few years, uh, which belong to the seed series A investors and so on. Now, this is of a concern because these investors, uh, they've already waited for three years. They would want to get rid of it in the next bull run so that they can go on and invest it into other projects or they have to return the money to their LPs. So either way, these investors are not going to stick around for, for eternity. right? So they will exit at some point of time and most likely uh, the sweet spot when once the vesting period is over and, and let's say the next bull run starts is when they will typically want to get rid of their investment. And if you look at percentages, that's a pretty good percentage, right? If you look at seed investors, that's about 15% and series A investors about uh, 7%. Um, so you have at least 25% which are sitting with investors um, and that could actually come out. And there is early ecosystem and foundation core team, etc., who also have a lot of tokens. So you can, you can say more than 40% is with people who would want to sell in the next few years. Uh, dilution risk. Right. So the fact that you are seeing at least 600 million more tokens coming into circulation in the next few years, definitely there's a huge dilution risk. And the fact that today the roadmap is pretty limited. Right. If you um, go down to this page, you'll see that their roadmap is only till about August of 2023. 20, that means, uh, you know, eight months or about 10 months from now. Right. That's, that's their uh, roadmap. What is going to happen after that, they have not really defined. Usually, if you look at, let's say, a chain link, which I keep referencing in every video, uh, has a roadmap for like at least two more years. Right. And I think that's something that you need to think of. Any projects that today must think of what they are going to, what their users will be using in 2024, because it will take at least six months to build it out and push it out. Right. Uh, so that is something of a bit of a concern for me, although at least for the next 10 months, they know what they're doing. They have something on their roadmap. Um, so what I would like to say is that don't believe everybody who says Nier will be 100x, uh, right? People might be tweeting that, hey, it looks great. Nier is awesome and all that. But, you know, it might not really uh, go up 100x. 100x, definitely not. Today, it, uh, Nier market cap is about 2.4 billion, right? And this is, uh, you know, at such a low price, the price is almost crashed about 85%, like all other altcoins. And at such a low price, it is at 2.5 billion in uh, market cap, which means, uh, and today a lot of that is actually locked up uh, because many investors are not yet able to uh, pull it out. So do be ca uh, be careful when that vesting period ends, you'll see a lot of those tokens getting dumped and that's when price might crash again. Uh, all the links that I have shown in this video are in the description. You can go through it. So please do your own research uh, before you go, go ahead and invest in something like this. Uh, that's all folks. That's uh, with today's video. If you liked this video, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Uh, stay tuned for more such amazing videos and welcome to the Wave Crypto Club.